Welcome to the Thriving Solopreneur Show, where you learn the stories and systems that have turned hardworking, self-employed business owners like yourself into highly successful, leisurely entrepreneurs. This show is dedicated to those who went into business for themselves because they had an idea or suggestion that ignited their passions to do more, to do it better, and to solve a problem in our community. Whether your business started in a basement, a garage, or at a kitchen table, this episode will bring to you a system, a tip, or an entrepreneur that has been where you are and can guide you to living the fulfilling life you desire for yourself. Here's your host and serial solopreneur, Janine Bolin. Hi, welcome to the Thriving Solopreneur Show. This is Janine Bolin, and today's guest is none other than the Darla Evan. She believes that in a world where we can all live in harmony and with our heart. And the thing that I really enjoy about Darla is we basically were two ships passing in the night where she was moving one location, I was moving to another location, and we were able to meet in the middle back in 2019 at a little coffee shop, back when we could do things like that. And it was so much fun to be able to sit, we traded books, we exchanged business cards, and it is lovely to be back in her life again. So let me tell you a little bit about what she is doing and why this is important to you as a solopreneur. She's an international speaker, best-selling author of Broken to Beautiful, and she is a transformational coach. As a certified life mastery consultant, dream builder coach, and master board certified neuro-linguistic MER coach, Darla Evan is a leader in the transformation and empowerment industry. Being gifted in vulnerability and authenticity, she shows up fully engaged, which allows her clients and audiences permission to do the same. She creates a safe space for everyone to literally be real. When you spend time with Darla, you will feel a jolt of beautiful energy and be on top of the world because she leaves you feeling like anything is possible. So join her as she furthers the movement that she initiated called the Whole Heart Movement. I can totally say yes, Darla is all that and more. Welcome to the show, Darla. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Janine. I am so excited. Like I'm vibrating highly today. I can say that. <laughs> so well, fun. one of the beautiful things about when you and I were able to connect, even that short period of time is there are certain people that you just connect with and you know that you're on similar missions. You may not be doing the very same thing, but you're definitely on similar missions. So talk to us a little bit about why you got this world heart or I'm sorry, whole heart movement together. Because when you and I talked a couple of years ago, that wasn't even on your radar. You were still ecstatic about your book being launched and, and moving forward with your business. So talk to us about what's happened. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, I believe in a, in a world where we live in harmony with our heart. And I started this whole heart movement because I think that so many people are so busy doing and they're not being, and they live in their heads and not in their hearts. And they don't even know that they're doing it. And I just, I, I just want to empower people to go out and live a fuller, more expanded life. I think for so many people we live, and I'm speaking for me in my past, because of things I've been through, lived in it from a place of constriction instead of expansion. And just lived a less than life than, than I could have lived. And I also think, you know, when we're not in harmony with our heart, we are truly not living our best life. And I'm like, for me, I, I can speak for me living. I, I saw my life going by like a movie. I was like a spectator and life was going by, going by, going by until bam, a life event happened that woke me up. And I realized, oh my gosh, I need to like go be and do and show up differently in life instead of from this victim space and in this head space and from a space of doing, and I need to come from a space of being and doing and doing that. I learned how to drop down in my heart and live this expansive place. Um, I think, I think for me too, this whole heart movement is about humanity, like our, all of humanity right now. Like I want to help people spiritually to evolve. I think that so many of us aren't living from a space of love and joy and maybe ideal relationships and we can have better health when we live in that heart space. And so just, it's about inspiring others. And so that's what came from all of that. And so I thought I was just going to do this author thing. And then I started coaching and 
what I found is, a, you know, I, I get these clients that come through and they're in that same headspace. And when I get to walk them through their challenges and their obstacles, I'm finding that so many of us are living from constriction and living from the headspace. And so that's where my movement began in that show. So thank you for that, because yeah. it always is so nice to hear a business owner talk about, well, this is why I do what I do, because if we had our druthers, we would rather work for someone else because it's a lot easier than running your own business. And so anytime I get to hear uh, entrepreneurs why, why they do what they do, it really shows the passion. So most uh, solopreneurs have a desire. They have a life they want to live. But when you start talking and using words like moving into your heart space or being a heart-centered uh, solopreneur, not everybody's going to get that. And especially this, because so much of the terminology has been adopted across the board by our society, we kind of lose track of what things mean. So forgive me, I'm going to back you up just a little bit and talk to us a little bit more about, yeah, yeah, we've all heard this of, you know, we're, we're not human doings, we're human beings. But still, I sit there kind of maybe as a quirky solopreneur going, what are you saying, right? I mean, give me details, give me something I can chew on, because I have no idea how to take what you just said to me and and make any sense of it. Yeah. Can you tell I'm an analytical? Yeah, no shock. So help this analytical out when you start talking about being heart centered or heart based. What does that mean? So I think so I think that means like so many people in life forget who they are. And so I've stepped into this thought leadership movement to help them remember who they were because they simply forgot and that is about the beingness and so we all are born with a gift and a purpose and our my purpose is connecting with other people through it's a spiritual path which I call my heart or my god this universal life and so beingness going to beingness instead of doing this <laughs> being is like what gives you life doing what gives you life, living life on purpose, living intentionally, instead of just um, in our head, checking off, you know, making the list as an analyzer would do. You make the list, you check it off, check it off, check it off. And, and you're so busy doing that you forget to just, just be and step into that. And, you know, I think when we come from a place of doing versus being, we miss a lot of the goodness in life. We, we miss so many of the, the, the lessons. And I, I love sharing this story about um, this kid fishing on a stream. He's fishing, fishing, fishing. And he looks down the stream and he sees this guy, this older gentleman catching fish. And he's taking these big fish out and he measures them by this broken off ruler he's, he has in his pocket and he's throwing all these big fish back and he keeps all the little ones that measure by his ruler stick that's broken off and the kid's like what the heck is that guy doing and he goes down there and he's like sir can I ask you why are you keeping all these little fish that measure up to this broken off ruler in your pocket and you're throwing all these big fish back and he said oh sonny it's because that's I measure all the fish by the by the size of the frying pan that I have at home and oh my gosh, how many of us do that in our life? Like we get thrown all these big fish in our life and we throw them back in the stream of life because we don't think we're enough or we don't think that they'll measure up or fit into what we're programmed that we think we are or that we can be. And so we let all these things go. And we're so busy doing, we forget to, to be the gift and to hold on to the big fish. And the stream of life goes by and and we're, we're not connected. We're not connected. So one of the things I like to share with the thriving solopreneurs is that the whole idea is that you build your life, you build the lifestyle, you build the life you want, and then you fit your business into the cracks. And so I would love for you to chat a little bit because this is kind of what you do. You do it uh, in this whole heart uh, movement that you have going on, but you also kind of touched on it a little bit with your book, uh, Broken to Beautiful, where you talked about, okay, it's time for me to live life my 
way. And as you get ready to move into that living life your way, talk to us a little bit about one or two examples where you saw, oh my gosh, I can't believe I fell into that trap again. Because we get trapped by our to-do list sometimes. We get trapped by the, I should, you know, what I really need. And, and, and it's not, it's, it's, it's incorrect. And this is where your neuralistic linguistic programming kind of neuroscience stuff comes in, that certification you have where we build a box for ourselves and we totally cage ourselves in. Yeah. Exactly it. So for me, an aha moment I had is like, so my first career in life was to be in dentistry. I went to school because I knew that I liked math and science. So I picked that and I knew I should go to college and all the shoulds, right, that I'm programmed to do. It's not that would I love this? It wasn't coming from a space of, it was from, from a space of, okay, where can I make more, where can I make the most money too? Like I let money program me for a while. Like I wanted the dollar and I chased that for a while. And I always knew I was supposed to teach and I was supposed to connect like that was this message that I got from Gus, which I call God, universe, spirit, Gus, D these downloads I get, Darla, you're supposed to be sharing your message with the world. And I didn't know what that meant until I had a car accident. And I share a little bit of this in, in my book, but I, I broke my neck and I realized in that moment while I'm healing, Darla, you're not supposed to be a dental hygienist. You're supposed to be a spiritual hygienist. You get to go help clean up the messes, not in people's mouths and their oral hygiene, but in their life, like help them with things they've gone through that broke them down. For me, it could be domestic violence, child abuse. Um, I had a son that went through prison who's now out. I'm so grateful for that. But so many things that I let break me down in my life, divorce, um, and how now I can look for the lessons in that and reframe what a gift those broken parts were. And once I connect with my heart space and I listen for the lessons, I get to help other people now do that same. Like, it's okay. I love to go minister to prisoners that get out now that are reintegrating into life. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, step, what would you love in your life? It doesn't matter what happened in the past, right? Like you get to choose to be, it's not about doing, it's not about making the money. It's not about what would your mom like you to do or what, you know, it's not all the things we think we're programmed or we're supposed to, to do in life. It's like connecting with your heart, vibrating higher and trusting the process and then be who you really are and perfectly you and taking off the masks. For me, I used to hide behind masks because I had a lot of shame about some stuff I'd gone through in my life as a child, in a horrible marriage, it, you know, I had some shame when my when my son went to prison. And, and so I hid behind that because I didn't want people to know the real me. And when we can remove those masks and just be imperfectly perfect as we are and share the real us, how many people we can connect with at that heart center. And it's this dance of awareness, like waking people up to just see see the beauty in the brokenness and learn the lesson from the mistakes it's not a mistake if you learn a lesson from it and there's no failure in life that's another thing i love sharing with my clients they're like well i failed at this and i failed or a prisoner getting out or or i, I love mentoring to women in domestic violence shelters like they failed at this marriage and they knew he wasn't good for them or, or whatever the situation but when you know better you do better and so failure is only feedback and again, that's tapping back into that heart space and quit judging and quit thinking so much and just being. Stop playing small, shine a light. And when I shine my light, I know I give other people, my, my clients, my audiences, I give them permission to do the same. One of the things I absolutely love about what you share and how you go about teaching and your speaking is that we talk about failure a lot because there's a lot of reprogramming and reframing, as you say, that we need to do. And I always giggle when people talk about failure in such devastating terms, because in the software industry and in the automation industry, like I used to be in, the comment was always, in order to get to success, we have to learn to fail faster. So I was trained on failing 
faster. And so for me, that's why <laughs> when people come to me and start failing, I'm like, good job. You're one step closer to that success. And they look at me like I'm crazy. But it goes back to what you were talking about as you as an NLP and MER practitioner, it's just, we have to reframe the way we see our own personal failures. You know, I can be very objective if it's code or if it's a business plan or if it's a marketing model, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, well, okay, that failed, that doesn't work, uh, moving on, right? But then when it comes to the personal uh, issues where we feel we have failed, either someone else or ourselves, that's where things can get really sticky. You wish to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And so, yeah, for that, I um, so many of us have these, I call them limiting paradigms or limiting beliefs. And it's our old programs in our mind. And most of our programming was instilled in us even before the age of five. And it becomes our core belief, uh, our value, like who we are. And then we get we get so fueled by by doubt and not enoughness and all of that. And that I love helping people shift that limiting self-talk and that self-sabotage to freeing themselves so then they can be themselves. And so um our first my first thing I love to do with clients is is let's come up with a dream. Let's come up with a vision for your life. Let's come up with something you would love, like screw all the, the stuff, the old, the, I, I have a chuck it bucket. And I think I've talked to you about that before. Chuck it in the bucket. Like if it doesn't serve you, chuck it in the bucket. It, or I, I, if I don't talk about that, I talk about the glasses you're wearing. Maybe your glasses just have a little bit of dirt on the lens and maybe you just need to clean them. If you don't like what you're seeing, let's just put on different glasses or clean the glasses you have on. And let's, Let's imagine we'll step inside this dream or this vision for yourself and let's ask like, is this something, whether it's a relationship, whether it's um, your career, whether it's your health, whether it's whatever it is in your life that, that you want more of or whatever, step inside that vision or that dream and ask, does it give me life? Does it light me up inside? Does it align with my core values? who you are, who you want to be. Does it cause me to grow or does it cause me to constrict? If it makes me feel expansive or you feel expansive, you're probably on the right track. If it makes you feel constricted, you probably need to dig a little deeper and maybe that's not the right dream for you. Um, does it require a power bigger than yourself? And does it have good in it for others? Like, I think our world has gone through a place we're, we're so self-serving and can we look at it from a lens of what can we do for others? Like, how can my message or how can the work you do like light a path where there is darkness so others can step into their beingness of who they are and to their heart space and um, just be a bigger, better version of themselves. So live from that expansive place. We're all worthy of that let go of that not worthy enough. And those are things we can work through in my coaching program. And I got some great, great tools. I have a 12 week program we work through and we get to work through that resistance, that resentment, all those old things to bring us to this next level of, of what's possible. And so I like to say that I'm a possibilitarian, like, what if, what if anything were possible? What if you could wave a magic wand because people, we are that powerful and we only limit ourselves by this up here, our heads. That's what I'm talking about. It, um, not being in the heart space. When you come from here, anything's possible. When you get in your head is when we have all that crap come up, the limiting beliefs and the self-tabotage and you know, all those old programs that don't serve us anymore that we can chuck in the bucket. <laughs> so I do love the way you have beautiful metaphors for exactly what you're talking about. And they come through a lot in your book, Broken to Beautiful. Um, many of the times when you were talking through your story or whatever, I was like writing things down because as a writer myself, you know, I always uh, enjoy when other people put words together and novel in neat ways that really stick it, stick the message in, you know, really fit it in there. So tell us a little bit about, do you have any more books in your future? You know, do you think you're, you're writing anything else? 
I do. It's actually, I'm a co-author of a book that is going to be released in April and it's called Short, Sweet and Sacred. And what it is, I collaborated with some other life coaches, some life mastery consultants, and we each wrote some stories that impacted our lives. And we, it's, so think chicken soup for the soul. We all kind of conglomerated, made one big book. So it's, so if there's 52 authors, there's one chapter per week, one lesson per week. And it's like, what is your biggest lesson in life that you've learned that you would love to shed light on in this world? And so that book, Short, Sweet and Sacred, will go out in April. It will be on Amazon and hoping, hoping for another bestseller. We'll see how that goes. And, you know, it'll be what it'll be. But it's all about shining a light on, in, in this dark world and about just empowering people to live a fuller, more expanded lives. Well, I look forward to it. Can't wait to have you back on the show when that comes out and you have some responses to that. So say somebody wants to get a hold of you. Where, what is the best way for them to reach you? The best way is through my website and it's or, or on social media. And I can, my website is DarlaYvonne.com or DarlaYvonneInternational.com. Either one will take you to the same place. Um, you can click on connection call and uh, you could read through blogs of mine. You could, if you're looking for a speaker or a coach or whatever, you can read on, on my services there. But I would love to just offer, make an offer to just do connection call. I'm about heartfelt connections. I want to hear your story. I want to hear what makes you tick. I want to hear where you're, where you're hurting or where you're unsatisfied or what you're struggling with. And how can I serve you? Like, how can I serve you? So I want to offer um, free connection calls to the first 10 people from this that, that want to reach out and just sit and talk for um, 45 minutes with me. Go to my website, Darla Yvonne International, click on connection call, and it'll take you to, to my calendar link and would love to just see where you're at in your life and where you're stuck and how maybe you can work, we can work through that together. Thank you so much. It was wonderful having you on the show today, Darla. Thank you so much, Janine. It's my pleasure. Lovely to be with you. And so this is Janine Bullen with another episode of The Thriving Solopreneur. Please make sure you keep your feet firmly on the ground as you reach for those stars. And remember, as Darla Yvonne says, anything is possible when you shift that mindset. We'll chat with you soon. Thank you for listening to The Thriving Solopreneur Show. We hope you found this episode helpful and uplifting. Be sure to visit us at janinebolin.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find a library of videos, books, and podcast programs to guide you to the future you envision for yourself. We also ask that you visit our sponsor, the8gates.com, for the books and online courses that share with you the debt-free living lifestyle that allows business owners like yourself to flourish. Have a great day and see you next time.